stories about being lost are easy to come by. Likely you have one of your own that you could share. The scriptures are really stories about people being lost and their response to those experiences and to God. Together, let's explore this a little. We begin with a call to worship. The foolish say, there is no God. We come trusting in Jesus, the face, the voice, the presence of God who loves us. The scoffers of our age ask, why do you seek after God? We come in this time because God's grace was spilled over in our lives. The hopelessness, or the hopeless around us think, no one cares about me. We come in this time to this place because Jesus has found us and brought us home. We join in singing, stand up and bless the Lord. In times of worship, we come before God in prayer. Let us pray. When we are short-sighted and think we can't see you, you show us a mother cradling her sick child. When we are anxious, certain you don't care about us, you are confident enough to trust us with your grace. When we are cynical, sure that nothing matters, you are optimistic enough to become one of us. God, you are our hope. You sweep the streets of the world to uncover the people we consider to be trash. You shine your grace into sin's shadows to find us where we, when we have lost our way. You would leave us to go find the sister we left behind. Jesus, you are our joy. When we walk the dusty desert of desolation, you refresh us with showers of grace. When our lives lie in ruined rubble, You come and build a foundation for us out of love and faith. Spirit, you are our life. God in community, holy and one, our hope, our joy, our life. Hear us as we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Which of us has not hurt someone this week? Which of us has not spoken or thought ill of a sister or brother in Christ? Which of us has failed to do good when given the chance? Which of us? All of us and each of us. But Christ came to save people just like us. So I invite you to join me as we offer our prayers to God, saying, Although we believe we are experts at faithfulness, holy God, we must confess, we are unskilled workers at doing good for others. Too often we turn a deaf ear to the cries of people we have judged to be fools. We easily scoff at those we believe have nothing to teach us or share with us. How foolish! 
Searching God, how foolish we are. Forgive us and restore us to your goodness. Then send us forth to search for all who sit in the shadowed corners of our world, yearning for someone to come and find them, even as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came to find us. Our actions sometimes show we do not know God. Our words and lives show we do not understand God's hopes for us. But with utmost patience, God sets aside our foolishness and fills us with mercy. Mingled with faith and love, grace is poured into our sin-parched souls, giving us new life, restoring us as God's children. Thanks be to God. Amen. We turn now to two very um, familiar, often familiar, parables, the one of the lost sheep and the other of the lost coin. Let us hear the word of God. The reading today is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On September 11, 2001, Wells Crowther went to work like every other day to his job as an equities trader in the World Trade Center. After the second tower was hit, the one he was in, um, after it hit the second tower, which was the one he was in, Wells led everyone he could find down the steps to safety, and then he went back for more. And after leading more people to safety, he went back again and again and again until the tower collapsed. On that day, this talented, athletic, good-natured, but in so many ways ordinary person did an extraordinary thing, giving his life to make sure others could live. On that day, God used Wells Crowther's, Crowther to find people who were lost. This being the anniversary of 9-11, once again, it seems that a story like this is a good place to begin. It is to be noted that if you were to read the full account of Wells seeking and searching, you would realize that he was finding people who had not been searching for a way out. They stayed in place hoping to be found, likely praying for a rescue. They didn't know how to go about saving themselves. They were like lost sheep needing a shepherd. And for those who knew they were safe, there would have been rejoicing. Still, there was, was and is so much grief around that day and since then in the weeks, months, and even years that have followed. This year, while in New York City on vacation, I and those with me spent some time at the reflection pools that are situated at what would have been the base of the Twin Towers. The grief of the lives lost on that tragic day cannot be escaped as you read names or glide one's hand over the names etched into the metal railings around the pools. There is no intention for this to be a direct correlation, this story to be a direct correlation to the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin that Jesus shared with those coming near to him as he taught on this particular day that we were reading about and that Luke was writing in about. But there are themes in both of those stories and all of those stories of loss, of seeking and finding, of judgment by others and rejoicing. 
Let's start with the judgment piece. It came in the first verses. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, that is Jesus. All the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Those who were likely thought of as the saved, the righteous, the ones closest to getting it right when it comes to God, the Pharisees and scribes, were rather indignant that someone would tout, who touted himself as a religious leader would be eating with those who were not dignified, as seen or seen as one of them. But Jesus, hearing their judgment and seeing their reaction, chose to teach them, the scribes and the Pharisees, and all who would listen. He taught them through a story, two stories. Often these two parables have focused on the ones who were lost. And that would likely, that is, and would likely be a good way to preach it. In fact, I'm going to do a little of that. There is a lostness to be spoken about. It is most likely that each of us has felt lost at some point or another. Either physically, like spatially lost, don't even know where we are driving or where we are in a mall. Lost in a store, on travel, or elsewhere. We can feel lost emotionally in grief, anger, and hatred. We can be lost in illness, whether physical or mental, as well as addictions. There is even feeling lost socially when one does not feel like they fit in. And for many of us, including myself, I have been lost spiritually. We have been lost spiritually. I recall just prior to my call to ministry, being in a time of completely feeling lost to God. I felt like I had lost my faith. I didn't want to open up my Bible or pray. I was resentful because I felt like God had abandoned me in my circumstances. Little did I know that I was lost and didn't know how to be found, or that I even understood that I needed to be found. Yet, my being here at, with you as a minister tells you that God found me. Turns out in a really big way. God continued to search for me when I lost my way, just like Wells continued to search for those who didn't know how to leave the South Tower. People get lost in many ways. Often I hear stories from those who come to the door of St. Andrews and they are stories of feeling lost. They don't know how to find their way out of homelessness, addictions, and abuse. Their family backgrounds are filled with pain and death. At times I imagine, where would Jesus be on any given Sunday? With us in the sanctuary or with those who are sitting on the fire escape? Those who are lost. These two parables answer that question. It is not that Jesus doesn't want to be here in worship in the sanctuary with us, but Jesus demonstrated that God's favors, that God favors those who are on the margins, who are lost, who are hungry, sick, or imprisoned. It is not really cut and dry either, though. We are all loved by God. But the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin are stories about the lengths that God will go to in order to find those who are lost. They are stories about God's love that pursues those who are lost, even if they don't know they are. These parables are about welcome and hospitality, belonging and community. So often it is much easier to judge and whisper to our neighbor or sit in fear than, and as the Pharisees and scribes did, to judge not only those who were lost and finding a welcome with Jesus, but judging Jesus' actions as well. Jesus was the one who was letting the riffraff come near to listen to him. He was not shooing them away as might have been appropriate in their eyes. Tax collectors and sinners. Does Jesus not realize what it looks like when you sit with the likes of them. I recall a lunch here at the church when, as often happens, the doorbell rang. 
I was pretty sure it would be someone asking for bus fare. It is usually not a bother for me as it gives me an opportunity to connect with those who come to the door and show a little compassion and hospitality. It is not even close to the radical welcome that God is calling us to, but at least I feel like we are not ignoring those God has here with us. Well, as I stood up to leave, I was looked straight in the eye and told, you shouldn't be doing that. It was clear that this person saw no value in those who were lost. It might be, though, that not only were the people on the street lost or those at the door lost, but so was the person making the statement. Which brings me to another way to approach these parables. The stories in most Bibles are labeled with the heading, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. So we think about what was lost. We sit beside Jesus and imagine being the ones who find others. And we are called to that. We are called to live in a way that offers Jesus to others, shares our faith, our lives, our hopes. We very seldom perceive ourselves as one of the Pharisees or scribes. And yet, each time we judge who comes into our sanctuary, into our homes, into our spaces, because somehow they don't fit into our idea of who is a Christian and who is not, who belongs and who doesn't, who is worthy or worth our while and who is not. It is then that we are faced with the fact that Jesus was telling this story to teach those who thought they had this God thing right and that they were not so right. In fact, they were just as lost as the sheep and the coin. The beauty is that God is seeking all. God risks risks the 99 for the one, which makes no economic or reasonable sense. God will turn on lights, sweep the house, search carefully until you and I and every lost other lost person is found expending more time and energy than seems reasonable. God is like the parent frantically searching for a lost child, whether lost in a store or lost in the power of addictions or illness or lost in relationships. God is more like that parent than a harsh and dictator-like ruler that has often been the dominant image of God. There's a crux, though. God seeks us to restore us, but we have to respond. That is what repentance is all about. That's not a word we use often anymore, it seems, but that's what repentance is about. It is about our acceptance that we have been found, even when we don't know we were lost until, faced with God's love and grace, we see that we needed to be restored. It is why you can't force anyone to believe God, believe in God or make them believe in God. Until an individual or even a community of faith realizes that they are lost and in need of finding, then they will not know or accept that God is filled with love for them, wants to restore them to wholeness and community with others, and will respond, and we respond to that love and grace. There is one more piece, though. At the end of each of these parables, we hear about the joy that will be in heaven over finding what has been lost. We are called to be a joyful and rejoicing community of believers. We are to celebrate each other, and even more so, those who come to us needing community and assurance that they have value. So today, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Pay attention to who is lost, whether it be you or another. Show compassion, kindness, grace, and welcome hospitality. Let God find others through your, through our love as we rejoice together for God's presence, persistence, and grace in seeking the lost. Amen.
We gather our hearts and our minds, our thoughts, and all that we've heard and bundle them up all together in a prayer, the prayers of the people. Ever seeking God, we come before you in prayer, for you have sought us out and claimed us as your own. Thank you for showing us how we are precious to you through the life and love of Jesus Christ. In our prayers, we name before you other precious souls and situations. With your spirit, seek them out. God of mercy, draw near to all who need you. We pray for those who feel lost in life, those who are frightened or anxious, those who are struggling with addiction or mental illness, and those who are lonely or despairing. May your reassurance and comfort find them. We pray for those who have wandered away, for those separated from their families by conflict or distance, for those whose relationship with the church is broken or forgotten, and for those who have given up on the future in despair. May your healing and mercy find them. We pray for those who feel forgotten, for those who think that they are worthless or unloved, for those who believe that their sins are too great to forgive, and for those who are convinced that not even God can love them. May your love and grace find them. Ever watchful God, you keep seeking out wandering sheep and lost coins, lives of all who are precious to you. Thank you for your attentive love and your patient compassion for all of us. May we rejoice with you when any lost soul is embraced and never substitute our judgment of them for yours. Make us servants of the mercy we meet in Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' parable, the woman who found the lost coin rejoiced over something precious. What we offer to God is precious to us. When we present it to God, God rejoices in our gifts. Let us bless God with our offering. If St. Andrew's is your church home, whether you live here or far away, I invite you to check out our website at standrewspres-tbay.ca in order to check and see how you might be able to give um, through that, that venue or through that link. And for those who have a different church home but are joining us today, I invite you to give to either a church or if you're a non-church goer to a place that you know is doing God's work so that God may rejoice in our work to help others. We turn now as we close to the hymn, a really good but beautiful and meaningful old hymn, Softly and Tenderly. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh. Why would we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why would we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home. Calling, oh sinner, come home. Oh, what a wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned. 
sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. Go in joy, knowing God rejoices over you, and care for others, knowing God rejoices over them too. May the blessing of God who made us, and the Christ who mends us, and the Spirit who gives us life be with you now and always. Amen.